in this video we are going to get the relation between input power spectral density and output power spectral density or input energy spectral density and output energy spectral density that means we are going to get the relation between input spectral density and output spectral density but from the knowledge of spectral properties that we already had in uh, Fourier series I think so we can say the relation between spectral densities will be like this so output spectral density is equivalent to modulus of h of omega where h of omega is the transfer function of the system h of omega whole square into input spectral density so this is the relation that we already have in symmetric properties of the signal so here not the symmetric properties in the spectral properties of the signal we are having this as one of the property so here i want to prove this property this is the this is only the relation i want to prove this relation first of all i want to consider a system for this system i want to give any signal x of t and here the impulse response of the system is h of t and i am getting output of the system as y of t based on the characteristics of the system or impulse response of the system when we give an x of t the system is giving response as y of t according to the basics of linear time invariant system we can say the relation between input and output and impulse response that means the output we can relate with in input by using impulse response as x of t convolution with h of t now we want the relation between spectral densities coming to spectral densities what is meant by spectral density square of the spectrum magnitude of magnitude of square of the spectrum is nothing but spectral density that means so like this so this is spectral density then what is meant by spectrum transform of the signal or frequency domain or transform of the signal so always spectrum is nothing but frequency domain representation or transform of the signal so there we consider this signal x of t as input signal for this signal if you want to calculate spectral density that means input spectral density if you want to calculate input spectral density then you will get spectrum of input signal that means spectrum of or Fourier transform of input signal x of t is nothing but x of omega whole square now similarly for example if you want to get output spectral density then you need to consider output spectrum here output spectrum means as we are having output signal as y of t output spectrum that means Fourier transform of y of t will become y of omega so y of omega whole square will give you output spectral density this is about small introduction about spectral density now come and come to here so here the relation between your output input with impulse response for a for an LTI system will be like this here I'm going to consider spectrum of this equation that means I want to consider Fourier transform on both sides so if I consider Fourier transform on both sides so then it will be like this x of t convolution with h of t so here I can directly write y of omega is equal to as you know that from the properties of Fourier transform convolution in time domain leads to multiplication in frequency domain if you are having two signals you can refer the property of convolution in Fourier transforms so if you are having two signals if you are doing convolution of that two signals the resultant signal is having Fourier transform equal into multiplication of individual transforms of the signals so that means convolution in time domain leads to multiplication in frequency domain that means like this 
if you squared on both sides you want to relate with the spectrum to get the spectrum you won't require normal spectrum you require square of the spectrum then only you will get spectral density just by having spectrum you can't get spectral density whenever you are having square of this spectrum in that place you can replace spectral density so here i want to square on both sides then i am going to get like this y of omega whole square is equivalent to h of omega whole square into x of omega whole square here according to the knowledge of spectral density i can write this as output spectral density is equivalent to more or less of h of omega whole square where this is nothing but transfer function square h of omega is the transfer function of the system from this we can say h of omega is equivalent to y of omega by x of omega always transfer function of the system is very important so here that will relates output and input spectral densities here output spectral density is equivalent to h of omega whole square into x of omega whole square we can write input spectral density so the relation between input and output spectral density is equivalent to output spectral density is equivalent to transfer function square into input spectral density when how we can relate it to the relation between energy spectral densities the output energy spectral density we can relate like this output energy spectral density is equivalent to more or less of h of omega whole square into input esd energy spectral density same we can apply for power spectral density also relation between input and output power spectral densities h of omega whole square into input psd so same relation we will call it as energy spectral density when the considered signal is energy signal if this x of t is a power signal then we can say the spectral density is power spectral density so this is the relation between input and output power spectral densities of a signal